I'm listening. All right, we're live. Hey, everybody. I'm at the PRI show in Indianapolis. It's Thursday, and I'm here with Nikki Zach. I'm not going to try your last name. I'm going to use Nikki Zach. That's what they, that's what she goes by. Um, Nikki is doing autographs in our booth right now uh, for about an hour. And Nikki, I want you to tell me a little bit about your story. How did you get in motorcycle racing? Well, it was uh, a little bit uh, of a midlife crisis. I had to do all of the uh, children's stuff and grandchildren. I've got a grandchild. And uh, I uh, put uh, dressage on uh, four-legged horsepower um, to uh, the back burner and uh, went and bought myself a Harley Davidson. Good for you. So I just walked into a dealership one day and uh, the that's how it all started because I was dared to get down to the drag strip and see how fast I could get the thing to go <laughs> and I was hooked from that minute. And where was that? Where do you live? Um, I actually uh, hail from Sydney, Australia and uh, so uh, I came uh, to the US in 2014 and I did a Top Fuel Harley school with uh, one of the legends of the sport and that's uh, Johnny Vickers. Okay. And uh, with uh, a group of other Aussie guys, and uh, so we did the oi 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 thing, <laughs> and uh, I passed that school and uh, was licensed, uh, but uh, I couldn't find a motorcycle that suited my physical, uh, you know, my Built. size. Yeah. And uh, then uh, I was uh, able to sponsor a bike built by Walt Timblin, um, and uh, a chassis built by him, and. Uh, when that bike came out to Australia, I sponsored it, as I just said, and uh, just observing it going down the track and how it handled, I thought it was a better fit for me. And so uh, I, uh, next thing I know, I'm uh, over uh, here in the US riding a NOS, NOS motorcycle. So the first one I purchased was not um, what I was looking for. Um, a very good rider now, uh, um, Robin uh, Procopio is riding it and she's doing really, really well on that motorcycle. Um, but uh, my second purchase was a bike I called the Pony. Okay. And, uh, uh, the pony and I, uh, we get down the track and um, we uh, are uh, making, uh, we're, we're, you know, really uh, getting into the record books. Uh, I was the first woman in motorcycle drag racing history to uh, make 200 miles per hour on the quarter mile and uh, 207 miles uh, an hour is what I did and a 640 flat. Um, so uh, I'm happy with my race program. I've invested in my own trailer, my own hauler and what I'm doing now is uh, getting ready for 2019 to be bigger and better. But for such a short time because I only started doing this in 2014, mm -hmm. um, you know, I've come a long way and uh, I've had uh, some of the best uh, people in, in my sport, in my industry um, helping me and I've been learning non-stop and I've been lucky enough to have uh, Dun Benson Motorsports and Dun Benson Ford out of uh, Dun North Carolina okay. helping me in whichever way they can and uh, they're here uh, in uh, one of the booths this weekend with the dirt on dirt um, uh, race car yeah. and uh, I'm hoping that um, you know we can talk to a lot of uh, new sponsors right here and uh, and have a strong program for 2019 this is a great place to talk to people and tell them what you're doing tell your story it's so much easier if you can meet them in person well racing that's what it's all about is right. that that is a uh, it breaks the ice mm -hmm. you know if you uh, you know as I was just saying to someone this morning, you know, you can't really go up to Tiger Woods and talk to him. No. You can't go and talk to most of these people at the top end of the elitists. Absolutely not. Whereas when you, um, you know, you're on a motorcycle or you're in racing, you have, uh, you know, there's no barrier. Right. You can uh, talk till the cows come home. Yeah, absolutely. And it's the only sport that they even talk to the drivers, you know, in NASCAR as they're going around the track before the race starts or at the end of a stage and you don't you don't see that in any other sport you don't even get close to those people so tell me where do you live now and where do you typically race well i still live in australia and uh, i've got uh, 
piles of uh, boarding pass, uh, you know, <laughs> boarding passes from uh, Qantas and American Airlines, and um, I. Um, but my home is in North Sydney, Australia, okay. and I commute up here um, usually uh, 12 times a year. Um, usually stay here for a month, but um, I'm planning on staying here a lot longer for 2019. Okay. And so, do you race at different tracks in the U.S., or do you have one track that you typically race at? Uh, well, my um, nearest home track is Galot Motorsports Park in uh, Benson, North Carolina. Um, but we race uh, the two sanctions that I race in under. Um, Man Cup is my number one, and uh, we race all over the East Coast. Okay. So uh, South Georgia Motorsports Park in Valdosta, Georgia. Darlington Dragway, uh, Rockingham Dragway, beautiful track because the, the runoffs are so so long. Okay. A lot of them are, um, you know, uh, ex Air Force bases. Okay. So, um, you know, back home in Australia, we don't have, like, we have super tracks and they're beautiful tracks, but they're just not long enough. I mean, you, you need a tight track and you need uh, lots of runoff. Mm -hmm. um, you've got the ball here. Right, exactly. And you've got the expertise. Yeah. Because drag racing was started in the US. Yes. So, who helps you with your motorcycle? Um, I have a new tuner as of uh, last uh, competition back in uh, November and his name is Jack, uh, Jim Clapsaddle, Clap been around a, a very long time and uh, I have crew Lowry Cal Callahan and I have uh, the, uh, Wayne Castleberry from Dun Benson Motorsport. So okay. we, uh, you know, we had uh, our first uh, event all together mm -hmm. because uh, I changed out my um, previous team yeah. and uh, we are uh, um, we did really well. We did Good. Really well. I was not far off my um, record setting times um, and we were very pleased. Awesome. So, one question I normally ask someone that I interview uh, women that would you encourage a young girl to get involved in motorsports and, you know, motorcycle drag racing, any kind of racing? Do you think it's a good sport for women and would you encourage somebody young to get started? Definitely. I would encourage any woman to do anything that uh, as long as they believe in themselves, mm -hmm. they can do anything. And uh, I uh, would say that um, I have had the privilege to meet a lot of race families that have got, you know, little, little guys. Um, you know, one family, um, uh, Michael J. Hines, he's out of um, Pennsylvania. All four children are on motorcycles. Really? And they are badass. <laughs> I'm going to have to check that out. I would love to see that. That's very cool. And I try to support them. I give them shirts, you know, like I've got uh, yeah. a clothing range. And uh, the children, I never get them to pay for nothing. Yeah. I, um, you know, it warms my heart that they want to uh, wear one of my shirts. Right. And so uh, I send them my, uh, all my stuff. Nice. Very nice. So, are you here now to stay for a while? Um, I'll be here uh, to, uh, for Christmas okay. and then I'll head back to Australia because the race season for me here in the US doesn't start again until April. Yeah. And uh, so I'll have some downtime and, uh, you know, get, uh, because I have horses at, uh, okay. at home and dogs and, uh, but who knows, I might bring the dogs up here. There you go. Absolutely. So and I'd like to say thank you. Oh, you're because welcome. Because you're doing so much for women in motorsports. I'm trying. And so, uh, you know, uh, thank you very, very much. Oh, you're welcome. I, you know, again, meet all my women on Facebook or social media pretty much ran across your name and was like now that's a cool lady i gotta get to know her my i got my motorcycle license at the age of 50. well done <laughs> my second husband rode motorcycles our first date was on the back of a motorcycle and um and so i surprised him and i went to the secretary of state took my written test and passed it the first time and went home and showed him that I could now ride with him. We went and bought a little Honda Rebel 250 something. It looked like a little kid bike. I learned to ride that around our yard and down the road and back in the country. Traded that up and and yeah, I started at the age of 50. So, you know, it's never too late to start doing something that you like to do, right? How old are you, 51? Oh yeah, nice. She's my best friend. <laughs> I'll be. Oh, you look great. I'll be 63 at the end of December, and I have 12 grandchildren. Wow. So, that's yeah, that's kind of my story. But I love racing. 
Um, I, the women that I'm meeting like you, I would never have a chance to meet had it not been for this. So it's, Real icebreaker. it's been a blessing for my life and I'm just so excited to be able to meet people like you and share your stories. That's the what we do. The looked like he wanted to... Uh, well, he wants to ask something. He can't be quiet. No. <laughs> I'm usually on the other side of the camera myself. Um, so you're the fastest woman in quarter mile right now. Yes. You're a grandmother. Yes. Are you the fast world's fastest grandmother in all sports? Uh, well, I don't know. I mean, you know, what would be the... Uh, uh, because... I mean, you got, who, who would be? I mean... Well, in the quarter mile, I'm the fastest and the quickest. On a motorcycle? Quickest. Yeah, on a motorcycle. How about a car? Um, I have... I'm, I'm thinking that it would be um, uh, the top fuel um, lady. But is there uh, any grandmas racing? Uh, I, I, could, I wouldn't yeah. like to say. So I, because I, I don't know. But I'm on two you, wheels, I'm, I'm the one. I'm going to put you, you as the world's fastest grandma. Yeah, I think so too. I like that. I like that title. <laughs> world's fastest grandma. Bad granny. <laughs> oh, I love oh. it. <laughs> I, I see a new shirt line. Yeah, shirt line that, out. Is, you know, no, that would be great marketing for you. Bad <gasps> Grammy. Yeah. So you've got, um, and I'm going to probably say your name wrong, Eileen Collins. Love to assist. Congrats on your 207 miles per hour. Oh, well, thank you. Thank yeah. you. She's one of our followers yeah. on Facebook. Yeah. yeah. Is she here at Indianapolis? Um, I don't know. Are you, Eileen, are you here? I don't know. She's watching us. Uh -huh. That's cool. So. Yeah. Awesome. So she's here at our autograph booth. We've got autographs the rest of today, all day tomorrow, all day on Saturday. So stop by booth 21, what are we? 21? 7127. 7127, I don't know. And usually what I do is, is these posters, I usually sell them for about $5 at the track. Um, for children, I don't, uh, you know, it's uh, gratis. But um, if uh, I'll just give these away, anyone wants to, a lot of the guys put them up on their workshop. Um, oh, yeah. You know, frame them, put them, that's what they, the feedback is. So uh, until they're gone, um, you know, uh, awesome. they'll be a freebie. Thank you. All yeah. right, stop by and say hello. Yep. And one of the things I love about what Melinda's doing is it's multicultural. Yes. You know, I think, when was the first time we were out of the country, remember? Was that way North Canada or was it no, Australia? It was, or... it was, and there's been some girls from Australia. I don't know who the first we one was. We had the was. Africa, we had Africa. We, we had, we've had all kind of people from so, all over the world follow with, us on our podcast. So, you know, within a year, you have built this up to what it's at now. Can you imagine 10 years from now? Oh, I can't wait. And, what I hope the I'm still and here. not just what the size is going to be, but what the impact is going to be. Yeah. We are seeing more female racers in yeah. every niche of motorsports, not just racing, but tire changers, pit crew members. Yes. Um, Car owners, right? I mean, we're seeing more track and more owners. Women. More and more women are <coughs> purchasing yeah. tracks. Yeah. yeah, and and what um, can't be forgotten is that women are um, more and more getting involved in politics. You know, yeah. like uh, through Europe, uh, most of the uh, uh, governments are, are women. Um, Australia is still taking a while to catch on, um, but uh, you know, for the most part, women are getting out there and getting it done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Well, again, thanks for being here. I'm so excited. And everybody, come to the booth. Yeah, get come to the booth. Signed by Nikki Zach. Yeah, Thank absolutely. You. All right. Thank thanks. you guys. Bye.